Hi guys, it's Floss. Welcome back to another Floss Tube video. In today's video, I'll be showing you what I've been up to for the month of October. If that's what you're interested in, then keep watching. So today is 30th of October, this Sunday, pretty much the end of the whole month in Melbourne, Victoria. Uh, it is a very unusual sunny day for now because we've had weeks of pouring rain. Our region or our area is not as bad but some of the other places in Victoria was flooding like crazy so we were pretty lucky and for now it's sunny but I heard it's still going to rain later today and for another week or so. It's just, it's horrible. I hate rain. Well, as usual with my cross-stitching update videos, I will divide the videos up into different chapters. So normally it's haul or whatever I got. And then it's the actual whip updates and then the life updates you can just go down to the description box or there's like this chapter box to select which part you will want to skip if you don't like certain contents so for the haul technically i didn't really buy anything i'm still waiting for my birthday present for myself the material and the paper charts for the Chatelaine mermaid box I do have a small rant I don't want to take too much time I guess complaining about this company but I made the order on which day 9th of July possibly on the weekend I'm not quite sure and I purchased pretty much everything I could purchase on there except the fabric because it wasn't in the drop down box and I just completely forgot about it. Anyways, I saw the FAQ on the website in USA. They said if you want us to kit up stuff, stuff for you, it would take probably six to eight weeks, most likely longer than eight weeks. And I thought, okay, I should have enough time in between. That's fine. I just want to take the hassle out of kidding stuff up and just receive the stuff all together. So I chose to spend more money. I mean, I could have got this done in Australia as well, but I thought they had this like Swarovski crystal pack as well and I wasn't sure how easy it would be to find that stuff in Australia so I decided to kit it up in America anyways and pay a lot of shipping to get a scent. Then in the meantime I contacted the owner multiple times just to check in. The first time was just to gauge how long it would actually be if it's not eight weeks. And I think the second time, oh, or maybe I was asking about the thread pack, I think. So they had, uh, what is it called? Ga Gatherer silk or something? Thread pack, but they excluded one color. So I was asking about the color and they said they couldn't get it in. It's technically discontinued. It's better if they just don't include it at all, which I thought was okay. And the second time was just to gauge how long the process time would be if it's not eight weeks, because it would be nice to receive it around my birthday or even like during the month. And she told me it should be okay because there's no, I think, Gloriana or something that were massively delayed because of the manufacturer delay from the supplier's end and I should be able to receive it at the end of October or around my birthday and I was actually happy about that 
then I didn't hear anything at all so there was no order update and maybe a couple weeks before my birthday so like mid October I emailed again and I, I was very displeased let's say that I was still polite but quite displeased in the email I just said it's been three getting to three and a half months instead of eight weeks now it's getting to 13 14 weeks and I still haven't heard anything what's going on if you're still trying to kit up stuff whatever is already kitted up can you just send it and the rest if you're still waiting can I just get a refund I'm not waiting anymore and in the meantime I actually found the so-called discontinued threads in Australia the supplier or JK's cross stitch supplies she had to order it but it was in in like two weeks so she sent it really quickly and then I got a reply from the owner saying she was away and once she came back from her holidays she would have a look on my order and then a couple days later my order was sent but to be honest I was still very annoyed and disappointed because right now till this day it's still stuck well it's not stuck but it's being processed in Miami so it's probably still gonna take about or more than a week to get to me which is really too long so I don't have the the satisfaction of showing you all this stuff that that's kitted up and I can't start this as my birthday present which is such a bummer but it is what it is I think next time if I want to kit up I will probably just kit up in Australia with the Australian su suppliers I'm sure it's gonna be a lot easier it just takes a bit more I need this here I need that here a bit of planning but I can do that so I'll get it whenever and maybe I'll show it to you next month when I do the next cross stitch update well even though I didn't buy anything I received a couple things from my mother-in-law as my birthday present she tends to get things from op shops knickknacks some odd things and some of them are sort of stitching related and I'll show you so the first thing she actually found this embroidered cushion I feel like it might have been made by someone I mean I don't know it could be from a kit an embroidered kit that someone did and then just decide to donate it because they have no space at home it is quite simple it's got this ridging is that what you say I don't know cording and just embroidered and it's all stuffed so it's like a proper functional cushion and being outside for a bit it's full of dog hair already so I reckon I'll just keep it in the bedroom it will add a bit of color because it's so simple as well with a bit of pink and green quite nice and then I was also gifted this like quilted bag it is really big I don't know whether this was handmade but it is quite quirky there are a lot of fabrics that are stitching or sewing related especially the front I think there are also some words somewhere I remember hmm. maybe it's one of the other things that had some wording and inside there's this little ornament thing I guess you can hang it or if you have like a little basket full of stitching knickknacks you can just pop it in with all the other things it's quite cute for now I'm just gonna keep it in the bag so I have another project bag so this bag because it's so big it will be quite nice to use it for the stitching meetups 
And there's also this. So it, it just so happened that recently I saw Karen. Yeah, so she's the one that's very handy in sewing and she makes all the project bags and uh, what is it, like thread books or whatever you want her to make. She made my quantum frame dust bags and frame covers. So she was saying she, now she could make these, I don't know what they're called, but like these bags to keep your projects in on the go or you just you don't want to frame them yet just want to keep them crisp free creased free crease free anyways so yeah now I've got one of my own oh this is the one that has so right now I keep the Victorian elegance in there and no this month I haven't worked on it it's just so it's got this round bit and you just tuck the project in and roll it up and it's like this perfect size for the Victorian elegance as well I think if you have a really big project it probably wouldn't work but yeah with this size it's perfect and you just roll it up and there's this ribbon to tie it Hi, nice so I think I'll just keep the Victorian elegance in here for now until I feel like working on it so this is the one that has this writing it says I'm always happy when I'm stitching so I'm I don't know I'm inclined to think that someone made this as well I don't know. I can't quite tell whether something is mass produced or not, but in terms of like these buttons, they seem quite random to me. I don't know if it's like mass produced, whether they would put so many little like quirky buttons on this thing. And that's the hole. Not really a hole. This is the future flaws here. Guess what? I received the parcel from America. Yes, it is for Chatelaine, the mermaid box. And that's what it will look like. Well, technically not what it will look like. Um, this one says, if you need the finishing instruction, you need to buy separately, which I did. And it was sent to my email straight away. So now, I was sent this small pouch from America. It was smaller than I expected. I was expecting some kind of box. Anyways, so inside, there are these bead packs. A lot of very small, delicate beads that I've never used before. The pearl, seed pearls. Some small, some large. And these treasures some larger crystals and some rectangular or cube shaped and some teardrops they are very very gorgeous so yeah I've never used these things before that's gonna be interesting and a bit daunting it does look very um sea like And these are the different thread packs. We've got some petite treasure braids, different colors. I've never used these before. I've used the um, like crappy metallic threads from the kits. So I've used the, uh, what am I trying to say? The gold collection, the dimensions ones, and I've used the. Oh, I can't remember. My brain's not working. But yeah, I've used some crappy ones, and apparently 
well, I'm hoping these ones will be a bit better quality. And we've got some Karen threads. I'm not sure what these ones are. Because I know there's like watercolors, water leaves, and whatnot. Some MPIs, MPI silks. Karen and some thread gatherer threads. Yeah, so I've only used silks for you thread and only one color, and that's pretty much the only silks experience I've got. So once I get onto this project, it's gonna be interesting trying different silks. And yeah, this is a little clip of the unboxing. I, I said I was going to wait until next month to film it, but I feel like I might start this before that, so I might as well film this separately and put in the clip. Now back to the original video. Let me have a sip of my decaf. And I found a dog hair in here. I am really picky with my drink. Sometimes when I drink water, I will look at the water first to see whether there are any dog hairs because they're everywhere. And I literally just saw some. Little quirks. Okay, so that's the hole. And now I'm going to talk about stitching. Well, this is going to be a very short video compared to my last one because I really didn't stitch much. I will tell you in details why some stuff happened and also i was really busy this month pretty much every weekend did something and this is the only weekend i'm not doing anything special really just staying at home uh first of all let's just address <laughs> the project that's been I guess going on for a long time and it should have been finished last month already. It is Wedding Sunflower by Teresa Wenzler. And yes, I did finish it. And I even signed, well, designed my new fancier signature or stitching signature and stitched that on as well. Uh, I, I'm hoping to show you the details if you can't see it this way i might make a separate clip just showing you the project and tell you what i'm talking about and i will have to blur out the names because i did ask my friend whether she would be comfortable for me to show the whole thing with the names included and she said no she would prefer the names blurred out and i will try to do it somewhat seamlessly but this is the whole thing beaded and I will have to get closer to you I can't really address how many mistakes I've made and I'm sure you'll see it in the little video clips and yes I did beading pretty much all week this week and I used the invisible thread to bead and it was the first time I ever use invisible thread it wasn't too bad actually so yeah lots of lots of pain doing everything and I added this anchor here because their wedding was on a boat I just wanted to somewhat customize it in my own way to represent that it is a boat wedding. I think it looks really good. I had to look at a lot of like patterns, I don't know, like on, on Google and find one that would fit this little space. And everything in here was stitched one over one. 
and that was an interesting experience. It wasn't too bad, but yeah, it does make... I, because it's one over one, I didn't expect how long stitching the words would take. It took ages. I feel like one hour I could just stitch one letter. It's ridiculous. So, that is my, my fancy signature. I decided to stick with. I was struggling to find a place to put my name on because I don't really want to disturb here because that technically that's their space. You know, they've got their name on it. I shouldn't, shouldn't mess it up. So I decided to put it in the corner. Oh, geez, what can I tell you? In terms of... Oh, let's address... So, before I started this one, I actually asked a question in different groups about the thread usage because I was worried that if I only got one skein each, I would run out of threads considering how intricate the stitching would be, on the, especially on the border. What else did I ask? I can't quite remember. I feel like I asked two things. Oh, the other one was satin threads. But anyways, I am happy to report that I didn't use up anything. Which means one, if the off chance that you decide to do this pattern, which is really nice, but wouldn't be the first choice you would pick if you're thinking about doing a Teresa Wensler pattern. But if you do, if you do decide to do this one, I didn't use up anything in terms of the thread. The only thing that's sort of used quite a lot uh, is the 640. I think compared to the other ones yeah 640 maybe was oh no this one 3032 that one had less than half left all the other ones still had plenty and in terms of beads it asks for two beads and I bought them new. So one is 03005 and 03021. There are not many bees left for the pinkish 03005 because it does have to go through all borders. Maybe they're like 30 ish. So if you don't have a new one, you it, it it's safer to buy a new pack just in case you run out. And yeah, there's still plenty left for this white 03021. So that's the beads. And the satin threads. I think because I did it incorrectly, yeah, so I used a lot more of this goldish one on the border, like on the, the borders. That's why that one was almost out for one skein. Okay, I probably should tell you what I did differently compared to what's required. <clears throat> so, first of all, all this satin stitches on the border, I was supposed to use one thread to do the satin stitches, but I did two. So they are much fuller than what the pattern requires. And in terms of the pillar, they said not to backstitch the inside 
but I backstitched it anyways. So I think it looks pretty good backstitched. And another thing to note, I did, I backstitched the pillar like differently, not differently, but on separate occasions. I didn't do them straight up, like one after the other. So this bit, this bit was backstitched differently. One, one side, Yeah, this, this side I did like long backstitch and this side I, instead of doing a long backstitch, I kind of did two separate ones. And after I finished this side, I realized it's different, but I was like, eh, I really can't be bothered changing it. And in terms of backstitching, uh, like the border, technically this pinkish area should be backstitched with another colored thread like a purpley lilac one but I didn't read the description properly so I just backstitched all in one color and it was okay it was still okay I'm sure if you do what's required in the pattern it will pop up a lot more but eh I really, I really can't be bothered to change because when I realized I already backstitched like most of these things. What else did I do differently? I think I did these squares wrong. I realized after I was almost done, like these little squares, but yeah, they still look okay. And what else did I, do wrong? I think there were quite a few quarter stitches that I missed. Then I kind of just fudged it with another color that was in my hand. And maybe I forgot to backstitch some of this too. Because when I was beading, I kind of realized some of the quarter stitches didn't have a backstitch in between, if you know what I mean. And I just left it. And I also didn't do the lazy daisy in this hard border because I tried it maybe three times. They look hideous. So I thought, meh, I'm just gonna leave it. And they still look good without the, uh, the bit of green. I am so relieved that this is done because if there is a stitching bug killer, I think this one is as close as it got to kill my stitching bug because even JP noticed there were multiple occasions I just sat here looking at my phone because I was dreading picking this one up. <laughs> but I didn't want to pick anything else up because I felt guilty not doing this one. So it was a mental struggle and on Instagram, cat, cat talks, cat asked me whether I would do a Teresa ones that are after this. I said, yes, I would because her designs are just so pretty and it is a challenge because you do get to learn a lot, like a lot for like from her designs because she uses a lot of specialty stitches but I would not give myself a deadline anymore so I would not gift her things I would just stitch it for myself for my own pleasure because having a deadline on Teresa Wayne's Le Pattern is torture it's really torture it messed up like it messed with my brain a lot I had to really push myself to do it. So now that this is done, I will have to wash it and iron it and frame it. So hopefully this will all get done next month in November. Is there something else I want to tell you? Mm. Oh, I didn't say this was done on 20, sorry, 
32 count playing on Belfast. So if you decide to do on 28 count, I'm not quite sure how much thread you would use. So you might use a lot more. And yeah, the 3032 I mentioned might actually get used up or very close to getting used up. So just be aware. Oh, I just, I'm so glad it's done. And this month for wedding sampler, I stitched for 17 days, but the stitching duration was not massive. It's about 24 hours. So I wrote 23 hours and 15 minutes. So 24, 24 hours. And I stitched two more things and they were both new starts. So I mentioned I decided to stitch something as another gift for the lady that designed our channel logos. And I will put the preview there. It doesn't really have a proper name for this pattern. It's an Etsy pattern. I think it's by the Unicorn Design or whatever it's called. So I just called this design Bunnies. And the stitch count is 202 by 200. And this is where I'm up to. I'm just stitching one bunny. You can kind of see if you squint that this is like the face of a bunny. There's the eye, there's a bit of the head. Right now I'm pretty much in the brownish zone. I'm hoping to do it at a point where the floral band or like the crown, the floral side thing would connect with the bunny and then I can do some blues or different colors because right now the color scheme is not very exciting and also to note, I bought some non-branded 20, size 26 needles and the eye. The eyes are horrible. It was really hard to get the, get the threads in. And this is a hand dyed fabric called Blue Sky by Paddock Lane Designs. 16 count Ada. Very wrinkly. It's quite nice to work on. So for now, my st stitches are okay. They're not too bad, if I say so myself. And did I bring the threads? I didn't bring the threads. Okay. And for this bunnies, I started on 13th of october the thursday i'll tell you why there's a significance to that but i'll tell you in my life update if you don't care about that so on the day when i started it, i only did 15 minutes and overall i did it for four days including that 15 minutes as one day and altogether seven hours and 30 minutes oh i also forgot to say technically this was designed as a full coverage pattern. So a lot of the empty space was supposed to be stitched, but I decided not to do that. So the 200 by 202 by 200 will be none full coverage. So hopefully it won't take as long, but if you know me, I don't stitch a, a whole lot. It'll probably take me ages to complete anyways. And then the next new start is for Christmas. I finally decided to stitch something for Christmas. It is this one. What is it called even? Jingle poles. So uh, if 
I decide to finish it, it will become little Christmas gloves. And right now, well, I started on this one. What is it called? It's called Teddy and, and Friend. And the threads, like the thread colors, because I was sorting the threads out yesterday. I started this one literally last night. This is the thread palette. It is so festive. It is amazing. I wouldn't think ornaments. I mean, to be fair, there are like four ornaments. But I would not think small patterns or small, small ornaments will require so many different colors. It's fun. It's cool. And it also requires beading. So it has bees and these little bells. And there's a needle in there. So it seems like the kit's asking for 28 count fabric. But whatever is included in the kit it was all like cut. So whoever owned it actually cut it into different just, just, yeah, it was very convenient. I could just grab and stitch. So this would have been 14 count Ada, white Ada. And that's what I did last night for how long? For one hour and 20 minutes. What I didn't realize was this pattern actually asked to use three strands on 14 count. And I was just using two. So I felt a bit dumb after I read that and I think I will just stick to two strands for this glove anyways and when I finish this and go on to another one I will do three strands. Another thing about this one is I didn't realize this one has a lot of quarter. Does it have three quarters? Anyway quarters for now quarter stitches and I've never done no that's a lie I've done quarter stitches on Ada before but let's just say I'm not a huge fan of piercing the Ada to do quarter stitches it's okay like I'll do it but I'm I'm not enjoying it a whole lot um what else do I want to say so this one will also require doing some cordings so fancy stuff to finish it off as a glove and I'm excited and also a bit worried to do that. But that would require me to finish the pattern first. Sure, yeah. And that's all the stitching I've done. All together, maybe 35 hours or something. Less than 35 hours. 33 hours for the whole month. Not a whole lot, really. Do I have any plans? I think now that the wedding sampler is done, I can finally do whatever I want, kind of. I will hopefully go back to the Victorian elegance, at least do some beading, considering I gained the momentum of beading from wedding sampler. So beading shouldn't really be as daunting as before anymore and I'm not quite sure what I want to do maybe I'll focus a bit more on the bunnies and stitch a bit on the spring will come make it to 10% and stitch on the coffee wine that's it. I just, I want to make it somewhat flexible finally to stitch what I want. And I don't know how long it will take to finish one ornament. I, I do want to at least finish one of them. So it's going to be quite a busy and random November, I reckon. Yeah, so how many... How many whips do I have now? I think now I have seven whips. 
So I've got Victorian Elegance. I've got a good Tyke by Long Dog Sampler. I've got Spring Will Come by Artisy. The Countryside by Max Stitch or Stitch DMC. Something else. Coffee Break by Design Works. Bunnies. The Etsy chart I just showed you and also this glove thing yeah seven whips it will be nice to finish something else I don't know whether I will be able to finish the fourth one this year it's gonna be a challenge and I I feel like with wedding sampler I've already challenged myself enough I don't know whether I have the energy physically and mentally to challenge myself again to finish something by the end of the year I'll see how I feel right now um, mental health is quite important so that's the end of my stitching update and thanks for tuning in and watch this video if you're only here for the stitching and to see what I'm up to with plans and all that I'm going to talk about life updates now and if you don't care about that I'll see you in the next video um, there is actually quite a lot to talk about in terms of life because it was busy and it was kind of complicated. So, I didn't stitch a whole lot the weekend, not the weekend, the week leading up to my friend's wedding that was on 8th of October. I think... I was just feeling so tired and exhausted and nervous because I, I'd never been a bridesmaid before. So the wedding was okay. It was exhausting. I got to her house after 9.30 and we got home after 12. So it was a long day. And let me get the coffee. And the boat wedding was not too bad. Originally, I was really worried that I might get seasick and felt like throwing up and all that. So before we properly started the boat wedding, I ended up having some like quill. And I had two, which was too much. Anyway, not long after... I started feeling like my throat was really sore and I thought I was getting sick so I was very worried and I was feeling dizzy and all that and afterwards after I calmed down I realized I was probably just suffering from side effects like I felt really dehydrated that's why my throat was so dry so I'm not drinking a lot of water and I had to sit down because yeah I could barely stand straight it was that bad like I was really dizzy and the day was actually quite chilly. I was smart because I was wearing like stocking and a long john inside the stocking. But when the boat sailed and we were doing the ceremony, the, the other bridesmaid, the other bridesmaid was so cold and I was cold as well because we were wearing like something quite sheer. Anyway, so after the ceremony was done, I just had to warm up inside. Everyone was like outside getting food downstairs. It was like a double deck decker sort of boat. And I just had to warm up and try to calm down. It was so cold. So I didn't actually end up taking any pictures. And the food was okay. Like it wasn't was very what's the word it wasn't like super fancy food and it didn't have lots of ingredients in there probably because the cooking space was limited and they just couldn't prepare that many ingredients we were okay there were a couple of friends that were vegetarians their food was a bit sad they didn't end up eating a whole lot 
I think literally they just got whatever we got without the meat part. And yeah, so overall the boat wedding was quite pleasant. The only thing is you can't leave early. So the bride and groom left early because apparently there was some tradition saying like if you if you leave earlier than the bride and groom you're wishing them ill or I don't know. So they left early first and we were just stuck on the boat for another half an hour or so. And we finally got off after 11 o'clock, I think. Yeah, maybe 11.20 or something like that. It was really late. And then... Then a few days after, I found out that I was pregnant. So that was the Thursday. And then I thought, oh, it finally explained why I was feeling so tired leading up to the wedding. And after the wedding, I was knackered. Like, I was so smashed. Um, like, it took me a, a, quite a few days to recover. I just felt like I wanted to sleep all the time. And that's why I started the bunny on that Thursday, the 13th, is it? 13th of October. As like, oh, this happened, what a good news, I should celebrate. So that's like my celebration. And then the weekend, we looked after Subi, the Greyhound. I mentioned this would happen last month, I'm pretty sure. And that was the first time we ever looked after like someone else Greyhound. The owners were so nice. We said we wouldn't like need any um, payment or anything, but she eventually gave us like 50 bucks. Um, and we used that for like a brunch date. Anyways, so Subi was this very gorgeous, pure fawn greyhound ball of energy less than two years old and shedding like crazy probably because she's still shedding her uh, kennel coat but she's gorgeous and i think she's never experienced this before seeing like going into other people's home and seeing two boy greyhounds so she wouldn't settle and she was very curious she was trying to check everything out and we had this baby gate to stop the dogs from going upstairs and she was just kept like checking it out and she could even open doors because we like our doors had the handles that will look like this kind of like a lever and she could open doors and after we realized she had that skill we uh we had to keep an eye on her like a closer eye and she just wanted to check everything out, going in and out of the, the backyard, like from the backyard back to the house. And she just wouldn't want to sleep. And yeah, the whole Saturday was, it was exhausting. Like it was nice to have a new dog and Rex and Rocket were so good with her. They were so tolerating because Subi just wanted to play all the time and you know, they, they needed their nap time normally. They would have like hours of downtime in between walks. But they were so tolerating. Even when Subi was like bossing them around, jumping onto their bed, trying to get them worked up to play with her. And I think eventually Subi got Rex a bit annoyed and they were having a couple of barks. Rocket came to kind of De defend Rex a little bit well like there was no biting going on but you could just tell that's how they communicate so that was nice and then um, I started spotting and on Monday I think I had a miscarriage and then that was confirmed with um, a pregnancy test yes yeah, so mentally it wasn't too bad but physically, it really took a toll. Um, there was a lot of bleeding. There was a lot of pain. 
And there's no point getting into too much detail because I might do a stitch with me talking about that. I think that needs to be addressed and that needs to be talked about because um, it does happen more often than people think. And um, and then I went to the doctors and I thought the doctor would take it more seriously, but she was kind of, I don't know, she was kind of chill about it, just saying like, oh, it actually happens quite often. Um, just make sure you don't tire yourself out and we'll schedule a blood test to test the whatever level. And in my mind, I thought, hmm, maybe, maybe there should be like an ultrasound schedule or something just to see what's going on in there. And I was also asking uh, whether we should do some kind of test to find out why. And she said it's really hard to find out the cause. Especially, I guess, it's quite a few days after. Like, I saw her three days after it happened. Um, but yeah, so the bleeding was like 10 days. It was quite intense for like a week. And the last few days was okay. And the exhaustion just wouldn't stop until pretty much this week. So I was feeling exhausted for a while. Um, what else happened? Yeah, so I, I, on the day of this, I actually went to work, but I just felt really crap and went home and didn't go to work the next day and I came back the day after. And there were some people that asked me what happened, like, afterwards. I did tell them the truth. If they didn't ask, I wouldn't go and, you know, broadcast this. But I just feel like if, if they did ask, I, I should say the truth. Um, so yeah, that's why this month didn't have a lot of stitching. Because there was just recovery from multiple events. Um, exhaustion from multiple events. Um, and then it was my birthday, so the actual day of the birthday was actually full of errands. It was so fitting to be the 30th because it was literally the boring adult stuff, like getting your car serviced, getting the dog to the vet for annual checkup. Um, what else did we do? Shopping. For different things like for food and also like for JP's running like runners it's just like really busy and then I guess one no two things that were related to the birthday on the day was we got a piece of cake we shared that and then also JP cooked for me and I enjoyed dinner um, but as an actual celebration we went to a very fancy restaurant here in Melbourne that um, I guess people have heard about well I haven't but JP had heard about and just decided we wanted to try it and that was on the Saturday and it was called flower drum it's like this long-standing very fancy Asian fine dining place and I've never really had Asian fine dining so when we went, we were like all dressed up and all that. And they actually had like banquet. And their banquet's price is like really up there. It's $250 a person. And we were not going to pay that. So we were just ordering like individual dishes and sharing. It was like the food was okay. But I find the experience very unnecessary and extra because each time a dish came out instead of going onto the table directly it would go onto a side table where another waiter would divide it up 
into two separate dishes and then with that they will present to you so you share exactly 50 percent of the dishes you ordered pretty much and eventually when we had like fried rice and there was like this vegetable stew and there was like a eggplant dish that's like three eggplants I think it's hard to divide that eventually just you know put it all on our table and I feel like it took the fun of like a normal Asian food experience out of the whole thing because Asian food tends to be shareable like you're supposed to have a lot on your table and you pick out what you want to eat whereas this one they've decided what how much you eat <laughs> sort of but that was interesting like I don't I'm not sure whether it's necessary to go through that again so it might be the only time we'll go there if that makes sense um, and then on Friday it was our five like five year wedding anniversary so I told work I wanted to move the shift slightly earlier so I could enjoy dinner with the husband to celebrate it and we just went to a Thai place nearby which was really good and every time I start work early the journey back was always so exhausting there would always be something going wrong like there's a car accident here or whatever I had to change my course or something and this time it was the same it was raining it was it was very stressful but eventually we got to the restaurant a little bit late but the food was pretty good so we just enjoyed that and yesterday i cooked after many weeks of no cooking because i just felt exhausted um it was nice it was nice finally being able to cook or create dishes and did I leave anything out no I did not so that's what has happened this month like quite eventful may it be good or bad and next month is going to be really busy as well we have a Greyhound Christmas get, get together picnic thing literally next weekend and technically there is another one from another organization but because now I volunteer for Greyhound Safety Net we feel like we should go to the Greyhound Safety Net one and it's probably a good idea to take some pictures as well so we can you know use it for social media so in terms of the Greyhound Safety Net social media I think after we started scheduling posts and think about what we post we get a lot more likes I know it's bad to quantify or oh, how many likes or how many people visit your blah 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 but that's how you get exposure unfortunately especially with sort of a charity group like this more exposure more chance you have to get your greyhound adopted fostered all the good stuff so we're doing pretty okay um what else and i think the week after we want to get back into dungeons and dragons dnd so we could finally see two of our friends the pharmacist friends um we used to work together and before covid we used to hang out quite regularly just for food or for dnd maybe like six months before COVID hit um, and then the week after there was a like work thing it's like a so one of the pharmacists actually left my company and um, one pharmacist decided to organize something so we could get together as like a goodbye thing and that would be nice that's a lunch so that's on a saturday and sunday i've got this chocolate course booked 
to make some chocolate bars and that's going to be in the morning um and i think the week after i can't think of anything but yeah it's still gonna be very packed mm. and that's it i think and hopefully i'll get to make the video somewhat on time with this one because we're in Melbourne, we have Melbourne Cup, which is on a Tuesday, so I should be able to edit this one out on a on the Tuesday because I get the day off. And um, I feel a bit bad that I didn't make any other videos this month, but just too much happened and I just didn't have the energy to think about anything else. Oh, actually we also addressed the hater situation if you have remembered i did say there was this hater saga and because i was pregnant for a little bit i decided to do a bunch of planning like renovation jobs and we got a quote from one company that serviced the heater to no avail initially and they gave us an outrageous quote so then we decided to get someone that we somewhat know and he gave us another plan instead of I guess taking everything out and put a big one in we'll just leave it as it is and um, add like more smaller external units to each individual rooms upstairs and make the insulation of the ducts better so whatever we have right now can work better and if we do need to upgrade the split system down here we'll do it later and that quote was acceptable it was just more than 10 grand so that was okay and I also got someone in to give me a quote to renovate a guest bathroom and we also want to get a move on with the wardrobe situation because this house is super lacking storage space especially in terms of wardrobe it is so crap and yeah it seems like it's going to be a lot of renovation maybe the towards the end of the year and also next year and i'm not sure whether that's going to in have an impact on video making but we'll see i might update you on the youtube um, youtube community post i said this was going to be a short one but it's not and I wanted to say something else, but I forgot. Anyways, I think that's it. And hopefully there's nothing drastic happening this coming month. So I can focus on my stitching because I do want to relax and enjoy my hobby. And I think you should too. And... I'll see whether I can find a time to do a stitch with me and talk to you in terms of I guess a new not new year resolution but I guess my overall plan and uh, how crappy this the, the last like 29th year has been <laughs> so I need to vent a little bit and that's pretty much my plan for now and until I see you next time stay strong happy and enjoy your hobby and make sure you treat yourself once in a while and rest when you can see ya bye